Well, now I'm uh, very excited to pass the microphone to our next speaker, who is Caitlin Peruccio. Um, Caitlin is on the team, the very effective team of Representative Rosa DeLauro, who's the chair of the House Appropriations Subcommittee on Labor, Health, and Human Services, and Education. And uh, Caitlin's going to give us an update on the work of that committee and where things stand. Caitlin? Hello. Well, thank you so much for having me on today. Um, Rosa is very sorry that she was unable to join, um, but we are very excited that the Full Appropriations Committee passed um, the FY 2020 Labor HHS Appropriations Bill uh, last week, and so hopefully we'll be on the floor sooner rather than later, and hopefully avert a government shutdown for at least the uh, Department of Health and Human Services. Um, Within this bill, we had significant increases um, for a number of programs that are of great importance to you all. And I'll start off with the CDC's Heart Disease and Stroke Division. Uh, we were able to include a $20 million increase this year for a total of $161 million. Um, we were given an allocation that ensured we were able to make some real significant investments in CDC this year compared to past years. Um, and another program that is of importance to you all, I know, is the Wise Woman Program that helps unshorten and under women. Um, we were to put in a $25.6 million increase for a total of $46.7 million, and this means the Wise Woman Program will be able to be implemented in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. Um, so going forward, um, it looks like we'll be on the floor in June at some point, and uh, we're pretty we're confident that we'll be able to get this passed through the House of Representatives, so this is where your help comes in. Um, we will need the Senate to write a bill that has similar funding levels uh, for these wonderful programs, or else some tough choices will have to be made. Um, we know that these are critical investments that should have been made a number of years ago, and we know we're making them now. So I would ask that you contact uh, your member of the House to certainly support the labor to support the labor HHS bill on the House floor, but then to reach out to the Senate to say adopt the House levels. Um, and then moving forward, before uh, not to get ahead of ourselves with the labor H bill, is right now we don't have a budget deal. Um, so we do encourage you to reach out to your members of Congress to support a budget deal that has. Um, hopefully parity for non-defense non discretionary spending, so we're at the same level as defense yeah. spending. Um, you know, if we don't have a budget deal, we'll have to go back to sequestration levels, which would be horrific um, for everyone involved. And so we do ask that you urge uh, your members of Congress to support a budget deal that ensures we have the increases needed for labor HHS, but then also um, to support the levels for these specific programs um, over in the Senate. All right. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Thank you first for your work in getting the bill um, passed through the subcommittee and the full committee. Uh, we're excited. So congratulations. And Thank there you. definitely is a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. So ju just to be clear, the ask that you gave is one for folks to contact their uh, representatives and er representatives and Senate members and urge that um, the budget be passed and that it allow for increases in uh, HHS and particularly the um, increases for the Division of Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention and Wise Woman that you mentioned. And then second, to reach out to senators and urge them to support funding levels similar to those in your bill. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, it's very possible that the Senate bill will write to lower levels since we don't have a budget deal yet. Um, although I, I, I have a hard time seeing how they can oppose these levels because we know this this funding for like the heart disease and stroke division is is much needed given the incidents throughout the country. So um, it's just critically important that we do have that budget deal, but then also that um, the Senate makes similar investments like uh, we have in in our bill. And, and usually we're at the end of the pack. We're usually in uh, July, so it's nice to go at the beginning of May. It is, absolutely. And so I just want to underscore a point that you made, Caitlin, which is we're really not talking about 
uh, big increases in spending here. What we're really talking about is uh, making up for lost time and uh, bringing in investments that should have been made in the past to uh, address and prevent the leading cause of death. Absolutely. So, I, um, you know, like I said, if we don't have a budget deal, we'll go back to sequestration levels, um, which I know is horrific for, um, that was before my time on working on the Hill, but it just set back our biomedical research as well as, you know, implementing programs that um, help us track different diseases as well as um, prevention activities. So we can't go backwards. We can, we just need to keep moving forward. And so, um, uh, all of your help would be significantly appreciated because that will be coming up sooner rather than later, and it's um, so critically important. We can right. stop investing in these programs once we have a cure for everything, um, but until then, <laughs> um, we need to keep spending this money. Right. 